Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Peace and blessings upon you all Dear students, this is our last uh, video in the deadlock series uh, That's deadlock detection uh, Where we talk about the, uh, you know um, That uh, we, we discussed about deadlock prevention and avoidance So if you are not uh, done with the, We are not doing the avoidance or prevention Then uh, the deadlocks are bound to occur Okay When deadlocks happen uh, We just uh, let them happen, you know um, and allow systems to enter deadlock. There may be or may not be deadlock, but there may be. If if there is a deadlock, then you gotta have a deadlock algorithm, uh, some kind of detection algorithms, uh, which will try to find out if deadlock has occurred or not. Okay. So we need to keep track of resource allocation of pending requests is because some process, if that has some resource and uh, is requesting some resource, and some resources allocated to this process, then this process is in deadlock. Uh, may, may, may participate in deadlock okay some process for example it has some resource okay but it is not requesting any resource so this can't be in a deadlock okay and or some process uh, is requesting some resource but it's not uh, having or holding some resource so it's, this also can't be in a deadlock so we need to uh, have uh, keep track of the resource allocations who has what and what resources are being allocated to home or what are the pending requests okay who is waiting for uh, which resources or whatever, whatever resources we have and who is requesting and who is who has a pending request okay so then uh, when we uh, see that deadlock has occurred so we need to uh, apply the recovery uh, there is uh, some recovery schemes that's we, what we're going to resolve the deadlock so um, we need to have a determine if deadlock occurred first thing and second thing is we got to recover from the deadlock and uh, detection recovery schemes require overhead that includes a runtime cost so maintaining the necessary information because we need to keep track of which resources and pending requests and all those things allocations and all those things okay then we uh, have to execute the detection algorithm that is also the time consuming uh, and when we start recovering then uh, we lose the inherent in, in uh, no losses are inherent in recovering because we have to kill some process or do something uh, wherein we uh, actually uh, have overheads okay now uh, this deadlock detection uh, is again like we had in a wide instead of the banker's algorithm it depends if we have if we have a single instance per resource or multiple instances per resource if we have a single instance per resource we can use uh, again a modified version of resource allocation graph okay here what we do is uh, we say uh, it actually uses uh, what's called as a wait for graph this is the modified version of the resource allocation graph um, if we have an edge from some process to another process in a wait for graph okay that implies that process pi is waiting for process pj to release a resource that pi needs what does that mean is uh, for example this is a process p1 and it is requesting for some resource say r1 okay this resource is being allocated to p2 okay now p2 is has been allocated this uh, resource p2 is uh, uh, okay it's a request it should be like this arrow should be like this sorry because this resource is allocated to p2 and p1 is asking for r1 now in this scenario when, when, when we see here that we say that edge pi to pj in a wait, wait for graph uh, which implies that uh, pi is for example pi is p1 is here pi is and pj is p2 because pi is waiting for resource r1 which is being allocated to pj that is uh, that is the p2 here in this case now in uh, wait for gra graph we will condense this uh, these two edges into single edge that will be p1 to uh, p2 so we have the edge like this in a wait for graph so what does that mean is um, uh, an edge pi to pj that is p1 here to p2 uh, if that is in a wait for graph uh, uh, you know it's actually condensation of the two edges that's one, one is from p1 to rq p1 to r uh, for example r1 here and from this resource to the pj okay this means that p1 is waiting for a resource which is being held by the uh, p2 okay now uh, when we have a deadlock is a, in this scenario when we have a cycle if we found a cycle uh, in in a, in a in this scenario, then deadlock exists. Okay, so the, therefore to detect deadlock, we got to maintain the wait for graph. 
and we periodi periodically invoke an algorithm that search for a cycle in the graph so this uh, wait for graph is to be maintained and then we got to uh, detect for the cycles periodically we're going to see if there is cycle or not if there is cycle so that means deadlock has occurred okay and uh, the algorithm to detect a cycle in the graph requires and sukar operations uh, that is uh, what n is the number of vertices in a graph so whatever the vertices we have square of that is the uh, you know order so big of n square is the order of this so if you see this um, here this is our uh, resource allocation graph the normal resource allocation graph and we see the p4 is uh, requesting r2 r2 is assigned to p1 p1 requesting r1 r1 is requesting p2 and p2 uh, is requesting r4 r4 is assigned to someone r3 is assigned to p5 this one is requesting r3 and so on okay now we can condense this edge for example these two edges into one edge like this because p4 is requesting r2 and r2 is being assigned to p1 so this this edge p4 to p1 like this says that p4 is waiting for a resource which p1 uh, is uh, holding okay because i'm not interested here uh, in this graph uh, graph i'm not interested in who is holding what actually i'm interested in in the deadlock scenario so i, I want to see the cycle only so i'm seeing that p4 is waiting for something which p1 is holding and now p1 to p2 is like this p1 is requesting for r1 and which is which is being uh, assigned to uh, p2 so we have p1 to p2 that means p1 is waiting for something which uh, p2 is assigned and p2 is waiting for something which p5 assigned now look here p5 can finish uh, you know uh, it's a resource like p5 yeah, r3 is hold by p5 p5 can finish because it's not in a cycle and it will release the r3 the r3 can be given to the p2 so this edge can go off right but if it is in a cycle then then there is no question of going off because nobody will leave it because one is waiting for other so that's why we have to see the cycle so p2 is waiting for p3 and p3 is waiting for p4 back and so there is a cycle in this way also okay and also in this way so when there is a cycle uh, that means this is waiting for this guy this is waiting for this guy this is waiting for this this is waiting for nobody going to release okay so this is a deadlock so that's why we see if there is a cycle we're gonna see hey there is a deadlock so firstly what we do in a wait for graph we collapse the re uh, these edges and then check for the cycle simple as it is now if we have a multiple resource then we're gonna do something else now if there are multiple instances uh, of a resource okay uh, it, 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 we apply the same thing like we apply for the deadlock avoidance the bankers algorithm okay we have uh, many data structures here uh, like we had there for n uh, processes and m resources okay for we're going to process for example p0 p1 p2 three processes and for example two resources for example and uh, so n is the number of processes and uh, m is the number of resources like we discussed it in the bankers algorithm okay so we need to have an available uh, as a vector of length m for the whatever the processes we have for example if I have three processes a b c then m is 3 available is a vector okay allocation uh, matrix and cross m matrix and similar request gonna be n cross m matrix okay and uh, <coughs> we have a little difference here uh, in an algorithm uh, like in the bankers algorithm we had a finish okay finish is a boolean array and it was uh, the same as uh, you know number of processes we have so n of size n and in the beginning we have all falses right because we thought uh, in the beginning we say that nobody is finished and we have to see if any if all at the end all are finished or not but here uh, in, a, in a in a in our uh, detection algorithm or safety algorithm we call it okay we have to apply the safety algo, algo same safety algo we use it in the bankers algorithm but we uh, firstly run the allocation matrix we just see uh, our allocation matrix for example we have process p0 p1 p2 p3 okay and it is having for example three resources a b c and we see uh, the processes who ha are being allocated something say for example some process if p2 is not allocated anything now if it is not allocated anything we know uh, there will be uh, because we need to have a condition have under condition of hold and wait 
if the process is not holding anything so this can't be in a deadlock so there is uh, no use of checking it in our safety algo so what we do is for the p2 here for example this p2 we keep it as a true in a in a beginning uh, in a finish so finish of i will be true if that process has allocation zero okay if it's not allocated anything so this can't be in a deadlock right so that's a little difference okay and at the end um, also in a safety algorithm we see that all processes are if, if, if everyone is true then there is no deadlock right but if here is also same thing but if some process is true uh, so false uh, if, if some process false okay that means uh, if, if at the end all process are true say for this is not this is false for example so this particular process is uh, is responsible for deadlock so this is uh, what we infer uh, from the deadlock uh, algorithm of safety algo of the deadlock detection okay so for the firstly we have work and finish b vectors of length m so we have a work also that is the uh, same uh, vector as of available same size that is m and we have a finish of size n so work could be of size m what are the processes we have say for example a b c okay and work equals to available like same we did in the bankers algorithm but first we do this thing also in initialization we run a loop uh, from uh, 1 to n and we see if allocation of i of particular this is a vector instruction uh, that means all uh, we have allocation of i say for example p2 we're talking about this whole uh, you know block okay so if uh, there is no allocation if that's zero then what we do is we put in its finish of i false okay otherwise we put finish of i true if uh, allocation of i is not equal to zero that means if there is some allocation we are gonna put it false where, wherever it is but if it is not so we're gonna put it true because it's not it will not be uh, you know this is a difference okay only difference between uh, the safety algo uh, of the banker and here then we do uh, the step two and three are same uh, as we had in the previously we just go on uh, chucking everybody and we see if uh, two things if finish of i is false and request is less than work then we go uh, we uh, then then th that process uh, will not be involved in dialogue actually so uh, okay the uh, uh, why because uh, that that can finish because it's 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 a request is less than the work so when it finishes what it does it goes to step third if there is no such i either the finish of i is everybody uh, is true or request of i is not uh, less than work then it go to go go, go for the uh, step four otherwise go to step third what it does is it will work plus uh, work is called work plus allocation finish of i make its finish of i true okay uh, then that means it doesn't uh, need any resources and go back to the step second find another process and do same for everybody like we did in a safety algo bankers algorithm okay at the end when we are done with everybody we see if finish of i is false for some i if uh, we have for example uh, this finish of i is true for everybody that means there is no deadlock okay but if it is deadlock is there so we are running this uh, when deadlock is there okay so some process if for example this process in its finish of i is false okay then system is in deadlock state okay we detected the deadlock okay uh, and uh, moreover if that process uh, then pi is deadlock that that process is deadlocked because we understood which uh, process has a false that process is deadlock okay now this uh, requires an order of m into n square operations um, to detect whether the system is in deadlock state or not so this is only to detect uh, deadlock state or not below big, big of m into n square is the order and after that we got to go for the recovery also do you understand let's uh, see an example so let's take uh, this example where we have some resources abc and this is a snapshot at some time t0 now available is this so firstly in our algorithm work will be equal to available right now that means work will be having uh, one 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 in it and uh, then we run a loop uh, for this thing okay where we say that for i to n we see allocation of if allocation i is not equal to zero then the finish is going to be true otherwise the finish is going to be false so this is zero one two 
3 and 4 p0 to p4 so firstly i see this allocation uh p0 o allocation is something so it's gonna be false and p1 allocation is zero so i make it true because this is not a load deadlock similarly p2 false and p3 again true because it's not a load deadlock and p4 is um, again false okay then what you do is here step third uh, step second if finishify is false i'm talking about only those guys i've run a loop for only those guys where finishify is false and request is less than work if that is so okay so i go from the p0 to p4 uh, okay but if finishify is false yes it is false and uh, uh, it's uh, if you look at here uh, finishify is false okay it is and request is less than work if its request is less than work then because i can uh, go for that uh, now if you look at this uh, request i that is uh, less than the available uh, or work okay that is because there is no request at all okay so if that is so what i gonna do is i will uh, release its resources and put it to the work okay so it has resources 0 1 0 so i will add it to the work so work will become so this was in a round one okay i did this thing so for uh, p0 i'm talking process p0 so work will be equal to now one 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 plus b uh, added so one to one okay and make it um, uh, finish true so this is also true this is done then i go to the p1 but it's finish of i is uh, uh, true so i don't work with this i go to the next it's finish of i is false yes whatever it requests it doesn't request anything okay it doesn't request anything and uh, so what i gonna do is uh, for p2 i gonna add work work equals to now it has uh, allocated 303 so whatever it is allocated as you could see here um, uh, work plus allocation what we do so allocation is 303 so that will add it to it so this is gonna be 414 uh, now this is the this thing now after that i move on to, to p3 because p3 is uh, uh, p3 is um, should have been p2 first uh, this was the p2 right this is p2 okay so i make p p2 is true also because uh, i make it uh, finish off uh, this is finish off here zero gonna be true and now here finish off two gonna be true so i make it true also now i go to the p3 but p3 is finishes true so i don't talk about that i go to the p4 now p4 okay uh, p4 is 0 0 2 uh, so that means uh, it, first it's a finish is false and then actually request is request it's request 202 is less than work it is less than work so it can finish so to release its resources 0 0 2 so work will become our work will become more that is how much uh, 414 plus uh, so it's 416 now and it's finish of i uh, that's finish of four is gonna be true now this becomes true so at the end I will see if um, all are true if all are true there is no deadlock at all so this will tell me there is no deadlock okay but if the scenario was like uh, this thing that I had uh, here uh, resources something like that so wait a second uh, so for example here the p2 has a request uh, the request of it is two 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 okay now let me change this thing now what will happen in the beginning uh, we have same scenarios like um, uh, in the beginning we have uh, this guy and this guy p1 and uh, let me make it newer well, 0 1 2 3 and 4 so p1 will be true and p3 will be true now whatever p0 okay let's request is also something uh let's request is for example two one uh, mm -hmm, okay uh, okay it's zero let it be zero it doesn't matter okay now p0 can finish then p0 comes in uh, round zero p0 can finish work work is uh, gonna be increased with so it will become one to one same okay so it will become true it's become true 
and I will not uh, um, P1 P1 can't, for P1 I don't chuck because its finish of I is true so I go to the P2 now P2 is allocated something so it is requesting 222 and what I'm having I'm having work 121 so this can't uh, finish right P2 can't finish I go to the P3 P3 is uh, true already uh, so I don't uh, talk about this guy I go to the P4 now P4 is uh, requesting 202 again uh, this is something uh, which is uh, greater than the work okay so I can't allocate so now uh, this remains false this remains false in the beginning because they were false all false and uh, if I uh, run uh, loops uh, no matter what times it's gonna be deadlock right so at the end I see there are two processes P2 and P3 uh, they are now uh, P1 and P3 P1 and P3 they were not in deadlock uh, but P2 and P4 are in deadlock situation so they can't finish so this will tell me this is a deadlock and I understood which processes are in deadlock okay so I have to do something to this P2 and P4 so that's what we have landed into the deadlock recovery now in recovery we can do a couple of things either we kill the process or we preempt the resource simple as it is so for example here uh, if I kill the process, some process uh, which are in deadlock, not others. Like for example, if, because if I do with others, uh, that will be a very you know inefficient uh, way of doing things, and that will be of no use simply because they were not in a deadlock. So um, and we understood that two and three, four process two and process four are deadlock. So I will try up my hands on the one process first. Okay, if I kill this process or I don't kill it but I preempt the resource I snatch the resources it has allocated say for example these are the resources 303 I snatch it uh, those resources so my work is gonna be now uh, you know, that is 3 plus 1 4 1 4 2 4 okay I can have work 4 to 4 will this P4 finish with this because it's request is 202 yes it can finish okay so I don't need to kill another process so I will start killing one process or preempting one process until I deadlock is resolved now in this case only I have to kill only P2 because it will release 303 now uh, that will be sufficient for this guy to finish okay when this finishes then other processes can finish and then I can start the P2 again okay so I got to either kill a uh, process one yeah or all because if uh, killing one process doesn't help I'm gonna start killing another process and so on until deadlock is broken okay uh, and we can repeat uh, the entire competition later on again the, the deadlock scenario I can I repeat those safety I'll go and see if the deadlock is resolved or not or, or, or alternatively I will uh, preempt the resources uh, until deadlock is broken okay we're gonna select some victim um, and we see how long it is executed those uh, you no know, resources are held we just simply roll it roll it back either partially or totally and uh, this has a problem that it, this can lead to the starvation because that process has to actually wait because this process has to wait now uh, for um, other process to finish and when that's done we can restart the p2 when the schedule will take it again so p2 may again come back and be uh, you know uh, have, this can again lead to us uh, to the deadlock so this can again be preempted and so on this can happen if uh, for some unlucky process so anyways we can resolve the deadlock by this okay okay now uh, we can put some order uh, uh, in uh, you know killing or uh, pre preempting the process we can see its uh, priority if <coughs> it's a high priority job we're gonna, not gonna kill, kill it if it is low priority we're gonna kill it and we see uh, how longer uh, it was there if it is more varied there okay uh, somebody is less varied so we cannot kill somebody who is a less varied there okay not uh, though the process which is uh, waiting for a log okay <coughs> and which resource is basically uh, some resource are critical we just see if uh, though uh, I can do some uh, which process kill some process which is not taking up some critical resource so then uh, it's okay to kill that process okay and if uh, I uh, gonna kill some process process a for example then it doesn't help me I can call it I have to kill process B I can kill process maybe I kill three but uh, there is some process D for example if I kill this one it has hold up many resources it can resolve deadlock so better is to kill this process okay rather than killing all the three processes together okay because that will make them all unhappy 
now uh, we have to see is the process batch or interactive because if it's interactive um, that's gonna be kind of uh, which is um, okay kind of thing because if there's a batch uh, process which doesn't need any, need any interaction uh, okay uh, then uh, you know you can kill that because that does need an interaction because that can come later on but here interactive process uh, <coughs> need is a more interactive uh, uh, it needs interaction so killing it is not a better idea okay so uh, and uh, then recovering from the deadlock if there is a resource preemption okay you got to select some victim okay uh, when you selected some victim it depends upon uh, the like we discussed uh, it should have a minimum cost of uh, by killing that or preempting that then we're going to roll back to the, some safe state and we don't want to start because uh, maybe again again and again this uh, process may be selected so we uh, keep account that how many times it's being rolled back so we'll ch try to choose some other process if it's uh, if it has already been rolled back right so that will help us uh, to minimize starvation okay now um, if we see the real time scenarios where uh, we uh, approach uh, what approaches we have for delicate handling then we say that we apply try to apply all of them or combination of them depending upon which one suit uh, to a particular uh, scenario okay so that is all for this so we're gonna say the end and uh, hopefully we see you in a next chapter now until then masalama